7 Sport presents World of Sport Replay with your host, Brian Martin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on World of Sport Replay this morning. For the next hour, we're going to look at all the racing action from Mooney Valley yesterday, the harness racing from Mooney Valley last night, and uh, all the greyhound action. See what happened during the week and see how your bets went with the uh, regular double. The features from the greyhounds throughout the week that we've just had. Tats Lotto numbers we're going to have a look at before we go for a break, and the Tats Lotto numbers are 3, 8, 15... 16, 23 and 25. The supplementary numbers 10 and 31. Division 1 prize of 1.3 million and the pool was just on 5.1 million dollars. Super 66, 4, 5, 2, 9, 6 and 7. So for the next hour, all the racing action. We'll be back after this commercial break. Tonight, the two year old races here in Melbourne, and not only in Melbourne but also in South Australia, continued with this brilliant uh, fellow, Cupstat, a horse by Sir Tristram. He struck the slow track yesterday. The track was slow, and the rail was out four metres for the circumference. And again, Colin Hayes and Michael Clark combined with the two's on favourite, Cupstat, in race one. Racing. They've gone on a good line in one of the best to begin down towards the inside. Won the start and landed just in front. Led a half length the blaze of interest. A length and a half further back Karpstad. Two lengths to go sees a go and about a length further back is Mount Buller. At the 800 metre mark Inverville on the inside joined by blaze of interest. A length and a half further back Karpstad racing three off the fence. Go sees a go went up on the inside of it and four or five lengths to Mount Buller last of all. Onto the course proper about 600 metres to go it's Inverville blaze of interest a three quarters of a length in front of Karpstad. Being ridden along now the favourite out three deep, two lengths for the back go sees a go and four or five to Mount Buller. Enverbal the inside and blaze of interest and Karpstad on the outside still under pressure but goes up to make a line of three when they swing for home and they're two lengths in front of go sees a go. Coming around the turn Karpstad moved up on the outside to tackle Enverbal. Blaze of interest is beaten it's Karpstad going to the front with about 150 metres to go. Drew clear about a length in front now of Enverbal and then for the back blaze of interest but he's too good the cult Karpstad he draws away and Karpstad at the judge at nine win by two and a half. Second home is Enverbal, three quarters to Blaze of Interest third. About two or three lengths then to go sees a go and three lengths last of all is Mount Buller. Probably didn't look terribly comfortable in the going there, Cups had but too classy for them. At two's on, Enverbal at five to one and Blaze of Interest at five to one in that field of five. In the second, the 2600 metre race and an open betting race, the fan favourite here Amanda Tour got a mile back at four to one. And they're racing this time. Valleybrook has gone away with them. Solo bit a little bit slow to begin, and so was Secret Diamond down towards the inside. One of the best to begin, Kameda's image from the outside is going to go up and share the lead with Valleybrook when they settle down from Mandator. Our Dizzy Heights being ridden up for pace when they settle from Ski Boots, caught a little wide. Secret Diamond improving on the rail. A length and a half further back, Commerce followed by Quazak. Buckingham Palace over on the fence, then Tal William. Then Batu Bay out three deep and three or four lengths to Solo bid. At the 2,000 metre mark, and Valleybrook went up on the inside side to lead three quarters to Kameda's image. Two or three to Ski Boots, still three deep around our Dizzy Heights and on the fence Secret Diamond. Two lengths further back in the field Mandator, one away from the rail. Over on the inside of it came uh, going forward there Commerce as they come down the straight. Around them goes Quazak out three deep. Buckingham Palace back on the rail. Batty Bay out a little wider length further back then. Is Tell William and last of all Solo Bid going to the outside. About eight lengths from first to last out of the straight they race. 1700 metres to go and right around the outside here it's Quazak going up to tackle the leader Ballybrook and turning down the side now it's Ballybrook and Quazak together by two lengths to Kameda's image a length and a half further back Ski Boots on the outside of Secret Diamond two lengths further back on the fence Commerce on the outside of it our Dizzy Heights two or three further back Buckingham Palace then Mandator one off the fence from Tell William on the inside of Batu Bay who's racing wide and three lengths to solo bid last of all around the turn of the 1300 metre mark and the leader still on the inside Ballybrook about three quarters in front of Quazak second the outside two lengths Secret Diamonds had a nice run with Kameda's image on the outside of it, fourth, about two to Ski Boots. They're followed further back in the field, around the outside, improving by our Dizzy Heights. On the rail is Commerce, a length and a half, Buckingham Palace. Batu Bay starting a run from Solar Bid is under the whip, and then Tal William, and Mandator's got back to last of all. At the 900 metre mark now, and it's Ballybrook about a half in front of Quazak, and Kameda's image a neck away, out three deep, a length, Secret Diamond, save ground on the rail. Three quarters to our Dizzy Heights, followed by Batu Bay, starting to work into the race very quickly at the 800. Two 
Peter Solo bid pulled out right around the outside of the Commerce and there followed dropping out of it there by Ski Boots and now Mandator putting in a long run then Tell William and Buckingham Palace back on the rail at the 600 metre mark and Kwasak went to the front tackled by Kameda's image and here's Solo bid out very wide coming with a long run with Batu Bay they race to the 400 metre mark Batu Bay put its head in front now of on the inside Kwasak and still Solo bid is plodding away on the outside and they've kicked away from Secret Diamond and Kameda's image Batu Bay first for home got away two lengths in front of Solo bid and then further back in the field Kwasak and a gap to Secret Diamond and the others struggling but Batu Bay's dashed away and looked home race four lengths in front now of Solo bid and then Kwasak and down the outside Mandator from a mile back but very very late Batu Bay's going to walk in Batu Bay at the judge wins six lengths Mandator second two lengths Solo bid third then Secret Diamond out Dizzy Heights on the inside Kwasak a gap Kameda's image then Tal William Valley Brook Buckingham Palace Ski Boots and tailed off his commerce. Well, he had the conditions to suit him there, Batu Bay. 13 to 2, Mandator running on 4 to 1 in favour, and Solo bid third at 7 to 1. The third, the two year old for the Phillies, and the pint sized little Philly here, I'm a Mica, started the favourite. The stand, the light, the racing this time. We're going to win a fairly good line too, planned and I'm a Micah began fast. Shortly after the was start and going straight to the lead here is I'm a Micah, the lead from Miss Epicure, followed by Plan, Mrs. Rumbold racing right out there with Gippsland Ghost. Getting up on the inside, Liberty Slipper, and they're three lengths in front of Faithful Thought. Two lengths for the back, Keir Nash Flight, and four lengths to Legendary Lady. On the uh, course proper, they race 700 metres to go. I'm a Micah about a neck in front of Miss Epicure, and Gippsland Ghost went up on the outside, out three deep. To tackle the leaders now, a length and a half to Plan under the whip, then Mrs. Rumbold. Pole followed by Liberty Lady is held up for a run and their four lengths faithful thought further back Keir Nash flight and last of all on the turn is legendary lady but uh, the leader is I'm a Micah dashing away on the bend 300 metres to go and the little pony is straight away now she's out four lengths in front of Gippsland Ghost then planned Liberty Lady now getting clear I'm a Micah with a commanding break in the straight four or five lengths in front Liberty Lady down the outside making tremendous ground I'm a Micah getting tired but she'll probably get to the post in time Liberty Lady flying home with a little pint sized uh, I'm a Micah won by a half length. Liberty Lady second, two lengths. Faithful Thought has run third. Fourth home is planned and a gap to Gippsland Ghost, Mrs. Rumpold. Then came Legendary Lady, the last two, Miss Epicure, in company with Kia Nash Flight. Well, too speedy for them, 11 to 8 in favour, I'm a Micah. The unlucky runner, Liberty, slipped after being held up for a run in on the rail before the home turn, and she flew home. She's obviously won with a bright future, the second runner. At 7 to 2, and third, Faithful Thought at 12 to 1. 1600 metre race, the third, the Roxburgh Handicap, or the fourth, I should say, and the favourite in a fairly wide betting race, Caesars Right. The light is on, they're racing. Jiger Jiger down on the inside, jumped away quickly with cool investment. Sir Great quickly going to the lead. Lighthouse Watson behind them from Sterling. Taros and something better going around the outside from Caesars right and Vertigo last of all. 1350 metres to go. Sir Great down on the inside, led by a half length. Now to something better going up second. Caesars right court wide around Lighthouse Watson on the fence. Jiger Jiger a length for the back. Cool investment. One and a half to Vertigo who got up on the inside of Sterling Taros. Into the back straight 1150 out. The leader Sir Great racing with the mouth wide open and led by three quarters something better two lengths to Lighthouse Watson a half to Jiger Jiger fourth the rail two then to Caesars right a length and a half vertical a length for the back in the field cool investment and three last of all Sterling Taros at the turn of the 8.50 and Sir Great strode out two lengths in front of something better Lighthouse Watson a half away moving up to third two to Jiger Jiger a length to Grey Caesars right two lengths to vertical four lengths for the back in the field cool investment and two to Sterling Taros starting to bunch up a little in front as they come down with 650 metres to go Sir Great led a better half length two on the outside is Lighthouse Watson and Jiger Jiger got off the fence is putting in a run so Caesars right and Vertigo right off the track sweeping around them then something better in their eight lengths in front of the other two cool investments Sterling Taros Sir Great in front of the 350 metre mark got over a length in front Lighthouse Watson struggling Vertigo off the track uh, then further back starting to struggle on the turn would have been Jiger Jiger Sir Great in front with Vertigo the challenger on the outside then further back in the home straight is Caesars right it's Sir Great a neck in front but Vertigal's got him Vertigal took the lead from Sir Great Caesar's right running on well but Vaughan keeps Vertigal going and Vertigal's going to be too good for them Vertigal scored by a neck on the post to Sir Great a half away third Caesar's right and a gap in the field into Lighthouse Watson then Jiger Jiger followed by something better and the last two Sterling Terrace and cool investment
Len Morton, the broad uh, vertical, they adopted different tactics uh, yesterday and rode the horse back in the field, five to one, six to one, Sir Great, a good effort to lead over on the rail, and Caesars right third at seven to two and favourite after race number four. The fifth event and the best back runner here, Hyper Boren, fours into five to two and favourite. Racing. And a little bit slow to begin, Brenton John and also Jangler Jem, Chisango. The rider has the whip on it to try and lead Burn Bray Lad when they settle. And just behind them, Hyperborean, Game Lord getting up on the inside of Bells are calling. Ginger Moss around the outside, further back in the field now, Hyperborean easing behind the pace. Chisango led at the 900, led by a half length on the outside, Ginger Moss second. Two lengths further back, Burn Bray Lad, Bells are calling the centre on the fence, Game Lord. Three to Hyperborean, two further back, a sequel on the outside of Blessed Way. Then further back is Eximius Pulled to the outside, Brenton John. Well back out of its ground, Jangler Gem pulled out wide from tonight. The Ritz and last of all, Risky Phil. At the 600 metre mark, Chisango over a length and a half in front of Ginger Moss. Second a length then to Burn Bray Lad. Now pulled to the outside, a seagull running on from Hyperborean. Game Lord back on the inside of Bells are calling and four lengths further back in the field tonight. The Ritz. It's Chisango striding away on the turn, three lengths in front of a seagull who's still running on from Burn Bray Lad. They look the only chances clear of the others headed by Bells are calling. Chisango getting very tired. Seekle out in the centre, raced to it quickly, took the lead, ducked in a little, and then further back in the field was Burn Bray Lad. But a sequel was getting clear of Chisango, Burn Bray Lad, and Hyperborean. And a sequel kept going by Ryder Hall, and it wins well. A sequel by three lengths, second home, Burn Bray Lad, a half Chisango third. Hyperborean's run fourth, and then Bells are calling. Game Lord further back in the field, followed by tonight the Ritz. Then Blessed Way, Exhibius, a gap to Ginger Moss, further back Brendan John. Then the last two, Risky Phil and Jangler Gem. Well, the barrier draw helped him there a sequel to be able to get off the track and make a sweeping run around them, 10 to 1. Burn Bray led at 10 to 1 and Chisango went very hard <clears throat> in, in front at 8 to 1. Favourite just struggled a little Hyperborean at 5 to 2. Race number 6, one of the good bets for the program here appeared to be Dane Vengeance. Racing this time, endowed over on the inside has begun fairly well. Getting out quickly here is Dame Vengeance with Lawrence Bell. Around the outside, Para Perfect, and further back in the field, Kahala Red. And right around the outside goes Trey Centaine up towards the lead. And as they race down with 1,300 metres to go, and Trey Centaine from the outside has cleared them and scampered away about three lengths in front. Led four lengths into the back now, and second placing Dame Vengeance. Racing off the fence, followed by Lawrence Bell on the inside of Para Perfect. A length into Romantic Storm, caught out three deep, a length and a half for the back, Kahala Red outside endowed, Oceana miss out three wide and two lengths last of all is Little Dawny, along the back of the track they race and at the 900 metre mark and the leader Trace and Tain led by three, Romantic Storm has gone up second, two lengths to Dame Vengeance still off the rail, a length for the back getting up on its inside, Para Perfect two then Kahala Red, Oceana miss has got out wide and is running on, then a gap Lawrence Bell dropping out from endowed and three last of all to Little Dawny, at the 700 metre mark and the pace has been fairly keen, Trace and Tain nearer the rail a length in front of Romantic Storm but here's Kahala Red and Dame Vengeance they let go very quickly and race to the leaders two to Para Perfect, four lengths Oceana Miss struggling from endowed, Dame Vengeance race to the front of the 350 from Romantic Storm, Kahala Red battling on on the outside, they've got away from Trace and Tain and a gap to Para Perfect, Gauchy sitting against this leader, Dame Vengeance on the outside a neck in front of Romantic Storm and two lengths further back battling on Kahala Red Dame Vengeance out wide a length in front when they turn now, beat off Romantic Storm, then a gap Kahala Red but the Gauchy went for home and she's home this favourite Dame Vengeance raced away, three in front halfway up the running from Romantic Storm and in third placing is Kahala Red but Dame Vengeance too good, wins three lengths, Romantic Storm second, two lengths third, Kahala Red, then Oceana missing a gap to Trace and Tain and Dowd Para Perfect, further back in the field, Little Dawny and last of all is Lawrence Bell Three in a row for the filly there, Dame Vengeance. She's now bound for the Australasian Oaks, as her former stable mate Miss Clipper did, and she started 10 to 9 in favourite. Romantic Storm 13 to 2, Kahala Red third at 8 to 1. The second last event, bookmakers took a little bit of a set against Judge's Rule, the favourite here, at 7 to 4. <laughs> Racing. Judge's Rule began brilliantly down towards the inside, beat out Orlandi Star and away quickly, fast look from the outside. Settling down fast, look and judges will share the lead from Burnt Horizon on the outside of Reform Road from Sir Brittany. Our golden fellow racing wide a length for the back of Orlandi Star and Amstel King. It's fast look off the fence about three quarters in front of judges rule who has to go up on the inside and splitting them there in the centre is Reform Road and they're followed by Burnt Horizon. Then Orlandi Star starting to work into it quickly but back on the inside there of Amstel King from Sir Brittany and on the outside our golden fellow judges rule got through to lead a neck now to on the outside Burnt Horizon 
advertisement at the 350. Further back, Orlandi Star getting to the outside from Reform Rogue. Judges rule away from the fence, so straightened up about a length in front of Burnt Horizon. Pull to the outside and down the outside, Orlandi Star from Reform Rogue. And Amstel King coming home well, but Judges rule in front with 100 to go. Burnt Horizon on the outside, wearing it down. Judges rule a neck in front of Burnt Horizon, and it's Judges rule in front. Judges rules one of the head, Burnt Horizon. He might have been hit over the head with a whip, though, the second horse. Five lengths away, third Amstel King. A gap in the field then to our golden fellow, Sir Brittany, and then for the back of Orlandi Star, then Reform Rogue and Fast look the last one in. That gave Greg Hall his winning double. Stewart's report showed that Burnt Horizon apparently shied away from the whip of uh, Jockey Hall in the home straight. It made no difference to the result. And the winner at 7-4 to four in favourite. In the last event, the race for the Mayors, an open betting race, Pride of Biscay, the 7-2 to two favourite. Racing in the last. Gone away in a reasonable line with the exception of Talon Bray who threw a head up and missed the start about a length and a half. Centre Orion dropping back. And when they settle into stride, getting a fair way back, Dark Moonlight. Away quickly, True Verdict led. Up on the outside, Ruby's Rose second. Two lengths to Timid Vis third, followed by Emma Green. They're starting to string out a little there from Joe Lady, cast a slipper. Pride of Biscay going around the outside from Diggers Lass, and they're followed by Centre Orion, who's moved up on the outside there of Talon Bray and Dark Moonlight. As they go along the back of the track now, and the leader. Here's True Verdict to get out about two and a half in front and second placing. Here's Ruby's Rose, three for the back, Timid Miss. Three to Emma Green, ahead on the inside, Joe Lady, then cast a slipper, Pride of Biscay. Diggers last the fence, a length and a half, Dark Moon, light out three deep, Santa Orien, Talon Bray back of the rail last of all. At the 800 metre turn, the leader True Verdict, and the pace is very keen, about two in front of Ruby's Rose. Easing away from the fence and starting to run on quickly as Timid Miss. Four lengths to Emma Green being ridden along, followed by Pride of Biscay. Then Joe Lady in a gap in the field, Santa Orien cast a slipper at the 600 metre mark, True Verdict about a length and a half in front, Timid Miss straight up on the outside there of Ruby's Rose, there four lengths in front of Emma Green Joe Lady, Pride of Biscay and a gap to Santa Orien, 3.50 out, True Verdict just in front of Ruby's Rose, the rail Timid Miss comes at them quickly on the outside and four lengths to Emma Green, Joe Lady and the other struggling, it's Timid Miss on the outside and Ruby's Rose turning together Timid Miss took the lead from Ruby's Rose, they've kicked away now from True Verdict and Emma Green but it's taken the lead to Timid Miss in front, halfway up the running from on the inside, Ruby's Rose, and they've spaced the others, but Michael Clark keeps Timid Miss going, and Timid Miss wins the last a length and three quarters. Ruby's Rose second, five away third, Talon Bray, ahead of Emma Grimmer Green, then a gap in the field to Joe Lady, True Verdict, Santa Orien, Pride of Biscay, Diggers Lass, cast a slipper and dark moonlight. Nine to two, Timid Miss, eight to one, Ruby's Rose, and Talon Bray making up good ground after missing the start at 12 to one, and Pride of Biscay disappointing at seven to two. Final tally with four favourites out of the eight races. Extra double yesterday at the Valley, three and five, sixteen dollars even. The Daily Double, eight and two, a dividend of eighteen dollars forty. The Quadrilla, five, eight, one and two, one hundred and twenty-nine dollars sixty-five. At Canterbury, extra double, four and one, seventeen dollars forty. Daily Double, four and two, five dollars fifty. And the Quadrilla at Canterbury, one, four, two, two, sixty-four dollars and five cents. Adelaide at Morfordville, the extra, two and six, twenty-four dollars eighty. The daily double, seven and five, thirty-two dollars ninety-five. In Brisbane, two and six, the daily double, thirty dollars fifty. At Kilmore, the extra double, two and three, fourteen dollars eighty. The Kilmore daily double, one and four, twenty-eight dollars thirty. And the Kilmore quadrilla, one, two, four and three, thirteen hundred and eighty dollars twenty-five. That was our racing from around Australia yesterday. The Greyhound action after the break. <laughs> 